everybody. Well, uh, I am Mac King, and uh, Leland's right. I'm going to talk a little bit about the festival. I'm going to do a couple little magic tricks. I hope you're OK if I start with uh, some magic tricks. This is actually the very first magic trick that I ever saw any magician do. My grandpa taught me this when I was a little boy. He'd say that the rope had two ends and one center. Then he'd cut off one end of the rope. He'd say, now I have a piece of rope with just one end. <laughs> made sense to me, too. <laughs> he'd cut off that end. He'd say, now I just have the center of the rope. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he'd cut off the middle like this. He'd say, now I have no middle and no ends. <laughs> OK, I wasn't that stupid. <laughs> No, I could tell he still had a piece of rope. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you aren't watching carefully. I'll start over. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> I'm Mac King. <laughs> All right, back to the rope. <laughs> My grandpa, he would cut the middle like this. He'd say, now I have two exactly equal pe <laughs> Mine aren't even close. Two exactly equal pieces. I don't know how I did that, actually. My grandpa's were, his were about like that, quite a bit closer. <laughs> really. You still aren't watching. We'll start over. That's two ends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> two ends and a center. Do me a favor. Let's see. Uh, right here in the front. You watch this end of the rope. Just keep your eye on that one. You folks in the back over here, you watch this end over here. <laughs> well, you're... You're watching this end, but it's already over here with the other one. So I have a piece of rope. It has two ends and a center. The ends are up here. The center is in between the ends, down here. But if we take the ends off, <laughs> you can't find the center. Ah. No one knows where the center is until we put the ends back. And there it is, <laughs> right in between. <laughs> You, uh, you see my teeth? Ah, they're sharp like a small rodent. <laughs> I cut the rope using the small vermin-like teeth. <laughs> so we have two pieces of rope tied together with a knot. <laughs> knot. <laughs> OK, let me get these scissors. We'll really cut this thing apart. Where'd they go? hole in my pocket. <laughs> I, I cut the rope into halves, the halves into fourths, the fourths, wow, there we go, the fourths into eighths, and the eighths into sixteenths, thank you. <laughs> Kentucky Public School? <laughs> so I didn't know, I was going to say little pieces. <laughs> Jefferson County Public School. <laughs> okay. All right, for the big finish, I uh, wave my hand over the 16 pieces. I say the magic words. What are the magic words today? I say the magic words. Purpose above self. Purpose above self. Service, <laughs> service above self. Service above self is what I meant to say the magic words, in fact, were. <laughs> <laughs> we should have rehearsed. <laughs> so, yeah. Service above self are the magic words today. I say the magic words, service above self, and they all come out in one piece. <laughs> I'm not kidding. These knots come off. It's a piece of rope. It has two ends, one center, and that is the rope trick. Ah. Here you go. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Uh, do me a favor, hold that rope up into the air. We'll try, yeah, we'll try a little magic trick. That's perfect. Stretch it out nice and tight. I'm going to throw these scissors and cut it right in half. <laughs> now, can you stand up for, actually, you know, uh, what, what's your name, uh, sir? Greg. Greg? Craig. Craig. I'm coming out there for a second, Craig. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, Dad. Why don't the two of you join me on stage? Give them both a big hand. This is going to be fun. Right this way. Sorry to trick you like that, Debbie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, over on this side and uh, Craig over on this side. Thanks for coming up. You don't really have to hold that. That was just a ploy to get you up here. Uh, how long have you guys known each other? Oh, about 
About two years. About two years. In those two years, uh, Craig, do you ever have occasion to use one of these? <laughs> no? you have any idea what this is, Craig? Raincoat. Nope. Cloak of invisibility. <laughs> That's right, this is the Mac King Cloak of Invisibility. I put this on, boom, you can't see me. As soon as I put it on, bang, I'm invisible. I wear it, I disappear, I put it on, I'm gone. Rendered invisible by the Mac King Cloak of Invisibility. invisibility. I don't feel like doing it today. <laughs> today I feel like doing a card trick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do me a favor, take those cards, count 10 of them right here, one at a time, if you would, please. One at a time, so everybody can see we're not doing anything tricky. Oh. There you go. One, two, three, oh, up the bottom for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And did I say be off the way? It's okay, I know a different trick. Uh, <laughs> hand the rest of the deck over to Craig, if you will. And uh, Deb, do you have a pocket in those slacks there? No pockets at all? Ooh. Fake. That's a fake pocket. I sort of picked you because I thought you had pockets. Oh, you're going to put it up your sleeve. Okay, yeah. That's, you know how uh, that works. Yeah, I know how that works, but that's it's going to make this tricky. Uh, <laughs> Craig, 10 more right here, please, sir, if you would. Right. One, wait, uh, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is it with you guys? Eight, <laughs> nine, ten. You dealt all those out of the middle. So ten cards up to sleeve. <laughs> Craig, do you have a pants pocket? Please put those ten in your pants pocket. I'll take the rest. All right. So right front pants pocket for you, and yours are up, up your. Oh, now you're moving them. Oh, okay. I thought you wanted them. No, no, that's good. Uh, just uh, yeah, but you can even because uh, the I, I just need to know where they are because I'm going to sneak in there. <laughs> you won't feel it. I'm going to sneak. <laughs> I'm going to sneak up your sleeve, and I'll sneak out three cards. Okay. You won't feel it. Then I'm going to sneak those same three cards into your pants. You're going to feel it. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to sneak up your sleeve, and I'll sneak out three cards. You won't feel it. Then I'm going to sneak those same three cards into your pants. I'll sneak in there three different times. <laughs> Each time I'm sneaking out one single card, you won't feel it any of the three times. It's gonna get better for you every time. <laughs> so, three cards will fly invisibly through the air from her sleeve into his pants pocket. In order to do this, I need the aid of a secret device, which I keep off stage. I'm gonna go get the device. While I'm gone, you tell everybody about your two years of friendship. I'll be back in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Who? Number two. Craig, did you feel number two land in your pants? <laughs> Three cards have flown invisibly from her sleeve into his pocket. That was the easy part. Now, for the most difficult part, I shall cause those same exact three cards to fly back from his pocket. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. 
in the interest of time. The three cards that have flowed into Craig's pocket shall remain there giving him, instead of the ten cards he began with, more than ten. <laughs> Get ready, this is gonna blow your minds. Right now there are two people on stage. Now there are three! <laughs> I'm back. Now, you may think it was just a nice couple of people up here telling you about their two years of friendship, but I will prove to you, for the last few moments, I walked invisibly among you. Keep your cards where they are, please, Craig. Bring yours out of the sleeve there, please, Deb. Count them here, please. One, two, four, four. Four, five, six, seven. Seven. Seven hmm. warm cards. <laughs> Three are missing. Bring them out of there, Craig. Make sure you get them all. I don't want to have to go in there again. <laughs> Count them here, please, sir. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ele keep going, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hey, thank you very much for your help. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Wait, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. I have gifts for you for uh, helping with that. Uh, big goblets of vodka. <laughs> Actually, if you'd hold those just like that, one hand on the bottom there. Okay. Uh, yeah, or on the stem, either way, just so everybody can see the water part really good. And the same for you. Perfect, Craig. So, uh, when you were a little girl, did you ever go fishing? One time. One time. My grandpa used to take me fishing when I was a little girl. <laughs> he said in order to catch fish, you have to have three things. You have to have the proper fishing pole. This is my grandpa's original fishing pole right here. You have to have a place to put the fish. That's what you're holding right there, Craig. I'm gonna catch a fish and drop him right in that glass of water. The third thing that you have to have to catch fish is, of course, the proper bait. A Fig Newton. That's right, a Fig Newton. You bust off about a third of a cookie. That's all you need. Nice, long, squishy, skinny piece of squishy Fig Newton. Here's what you do. You roll up that Fig Newton. Come this way a little bit there, Craig. You roll up that Fig Newton piece on the hook. Just kind of roll it and squish it on there. It'll stay. And with Fig Newton as bait, you can fish anywhere you want. We're fishing out here in midair, but we're not looking for just any fish. We're catching goldfish, and there's a goldfish right over here in the air. I'll see if I can. No, not in that glass. I'm floating in midair. I got him. Oh, let's see. Oh, come here, buddy. He is a fighter. Check him out. <laughs> That's a dang real fish. Do you know the rule here at the Gold House, Craig? You eat it. That's right, whatever you catch. <laughs> you gotta eat. Oh, God. No, he's still there, he's still there. <laughs> He's just a little scared now. <laughs> I, uh, I can't show you how to catch fish out of the air, but I can show you how to freak out your friends. Let's see. You get a carrot and a carrot peeler. This is how I pretended to eat a goldfish just a second ago. Here's what you do. Peel up a big strip of carrot so it looks just like a goldfish. Okay, there's work to do. <laughs> yeah, that looks more and more like the fishing worm. <laughs> you have to use your teeth for this. <laughs> These used to be my grandpa's, too. <laughs> you turn up the carrot. So it's vaguely, whoa, vaguely goldfish shaped. Now, sort of goldfish shaped. Now, pretend like that's your friend's aquarium and that there are a whole bunch of goldfish swimming in there. Here's what you do. Hold the carrot sliver behind your fingers. You reach down amongst your friend's fish, pull out the carrot. You go, oh, I got your goldfish. Before they get a good look at that carrot, you quickly pop it into your mouth. Whoop. Give that another rinse. <laughs> you quickly pop it in your mouth. Oh, no. Hold that glass over here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you very much for your help. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh. oh, thank you so much for your help. Watch your step going off the edge there. Oh, yeah, that's another good trick to teach your children. <laughs> so, um, I've never talked behind a lectern before. This is fun. <laughs> so that's a few tricks. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to say, I mean, I, I, you guys get people talking about Louisville all the time. You know how great a place this is. But the reason my partner uh, in this shebang, Bill Hers, and I are bringing this festival to Louisville, number one, we like magic, um, but we also really like Louisville. I mean, I grew up here. Um, it's, I, I think this is one of the greatest cities in the US. And uh, it's, uh, very supportive of the arts, very supportive of anything new, different, unique. And a couple of years ago, well, actually, let's go back to when I was in high school. I started working at uh, Caulfield's Novelties when it was on Market Street, now on Main Street. Uh, but I started going in there when I was a little kid. It was like my dream to work there. Uh, <laughs> I might be the only kid in America who that was their dream job. <laughs> but I, uh, I started working there for Karen Caulfield uh, when I was about uh, in high school, about 15 years old. And I can't believe he hired me. I had. Uh, Two days before I went in to be interviewed for the job of being the magic demonstrator, they had a little counter of magic tricks there at Caulfield's, and I sold the magic tricks. That's what that's the job I applied for. And I had fallen off a ladder hanging a parachute in my ceiling of in the ceiling of my bedroom, <laughs> sliced open my palm and gotten like 30 stitches uh, the two two nights before I went in for this little interview. So I went in with my hand all bandaged up to uh, apply for the job of demonstrating magic tricks. <laughs> Karen hired me and um, I worked there uh, the last couple years in high school and then in the first couple of summers when I was in college. And he, he just couldn't have been nicer. And one of the great things about working there was people, you know, magicians from all over who were stopping in in town would come by. I met Muhammad Ali, he used to come in there a number of times and I would teach him some magic tricks. Uh, but one of my favorite, actually, I guess my favorite guy to come in there was a fellow named Larry Jones, um, an attorney here in town. And I, you know, talking to Larry, and I found out he was on the Ed Sullivan show and the Bozo show, and I thought he was lying. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he had a pretty good uh, running uh, pattern. But so I got to be friends with Larry, and he invited me out to his house a few times for dinner, and just was really encouraging to me in growing up as a magician and wanting to be a magician for a living. And you know, that's weird to encourage a kid to do. And I really always appreciated it. And so a couple years ago, um, Stephen Jones, Larry's son, called me. What's that? Uh, oh, I thought, uh, Stephen's here, I thought he just interrupted me. <laughs> no. And uh, I, Stephen called me and said, hey, you know, we, we've remodeled these whiskey roll lofts uh, where Squirrely's Magic Tea Room was. Uh, that was, uh, if you don't know, that was a little theater that Larry had, had built and did magic shows on the weekend. Just a beautiful jewel of a little theater. Vintage magic posters uh, from the turn of the century, uh, a century ago, uh, on the walls. And just a, a beautiful showcase for magic. And Larry was a beautiful, you know, um, sort of ambassador for magic here in Louisville. And uh, Stephen said, we're opening the Whiskey Roll Offs. Any chance of you coming in? No one's done a show on that stage since my dad died. And uh, we would love for you to be a part of that opening night. And I, you know, I, yes, it would be an honor to be a part of that. And I called my friend uh, Bill Hers, who books all my corporate shows outside of Las Vegas, and said, Do you, are you interested in coming in and doing some close-up magic for these folks? And uh, there's, we got no money, but it, it's a really cool thing, and some of the proceeds will benes benefit uh, Mary Hurst, a great charity in, in Louisville. And so he agreed without hesitation. So we came in, I did the show, Bill did some close up. We had another great close up magician, Chad Long. And it was a huge, you know, really fun evening. The, the, these guys really put on a great event to open those uh, historic uh, building back up. And they preserved the theater just as it was, actually maybe even better than when Larry worked in it. And that, it was really an honor to be on that stage. And so my business partner, Bill Hers, he'd been trying to sell a magic festival 
around the country to different communities. Mm -hmm. And when he saw that theater and how supportive people in Louisville were for the arts and for independent restaurants and just, um, just how, if you, if you haven't been here, you know, maybe your op opinion of Louisville is different uh, than the people who spend some time here. Uh, it's, it's a great combination of Southern and cosmopolitan, and I really, I, I'm really honored to be here, be from here, and I was honored to be a part of that event. Bill said, you know, this is the spot. This is, this is the city where we should see if we can have this festival, and it worked out that the mayor was there that night, and Jerry Abramson was there that night, and they all came up and said, you know, I had no idea this was what magic was. You know, it, people's perception of magic is that it's either for children or it's kind of a creepy guy with a greasy tuxedo, or <laughs> and uh, I'm just a creepy guy with a stripy suit. So <laughs> it's a very different presentation. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, we 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 worked and worked and we you know we we're like we're, we're, let's try to bring this festival to Louisville and Stephen and Val Jones at Whiskey Roll Offs and then Mayor Fisher has gotten involved and uh, my uh, oldest friend in Magic Lance Burton you know also grew up here. We met when we were like 14 years old at the Magic Club. Uh, when it used to meet at the YWCA at the corner of 3rd and Broadway. And so we've been working on this festival for over a year now. We've got 30 different shows coming in. Um, if you guys, uh, if you know anybody, I mean, this is our, this, we're hoping to make this an annual event. Where we didn't, uh, you know, we might have bitten off more than we can chew this year. We've 30 different shows, but a few of them are already sold out. The main gala show Saturday night at the Brown Theater. I mean, I don't want to bore you with all the details of the shows, but I just want to tell you uh, how you know this already, but how supportive the city has been to us and the festival, and we uh, we hope that'll continue every year. We want to do this every year, and um, if you're interested in sponsorship next year, let me know. <laughs> uh, we're always looking for sponsorship dollars, and uh, hoping to make this bigger and better every year. Uh, as Leon alluded to, these festivals in, are very popular in Europe and Asia and, and have grown, you know, some of them get 30, 40,000 people. We won't be that big this year. We're hoping for like 4,000 total attendees over the course of the weekend. <coughs> Most of the shows are in very intimate venues. The one gala show at the Brown Theater is about 1,400. But over the course of the weekend, we hope to sell 4,000 tickets. And, but we hope that grows and, you know, doubles every year until it's, you know, the entire population of Loyal. And, uh, but we, we really, I, I thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you about it, and, uh, but you don't need me to tell you how great this city is I, and uh, how supportive they are of people doing, trying to do entrepreneurial things. And so I, I appreciate you letting me come in today. Uh, I got one last trick, and then we can, I, I'm happy to take questions or whatever you want to do. Um, Let's see, I'll move out from behind the podium. A lot of people say that there are no cures for the hiccups, but I have invented the Mac King Hiccup Cure, and it really works. You get a big grocery bag, and you put it over your head. I know you got to go to work. Don't everybody leave while I'm under here. It's going to look the same from there. <laughs> so you put it, this cures your hiccups. This is the Mac King hiccup cure. You put a big bag over your head. Put the bag over your head and you spin around until you're really dizzy. And your hiccups are gone. Hey, thank you again.